So as I expect all of you here already know, I recently accepted Andre Robichaud's resignation as President and CEO of Thunder Bay Regional Health Sciences Center. She is also resigning as the Acting CEO of Thunder Bay Regional Research Institute. Andre will be assuming the position of President and CEO of the Rouge Valley Health System in the Greater Toronto Area in mid-June. I wish Andre well with this exciting new phase in her career. But I am, of course, disappointed that we are losing her. These are challenging times in the healthcare, and this is a, a part of the province where we are particularly challenged. It's even more acute. We are a far-flung region geographically, sparsely populated with some of the poorest population health indicators in the province. In that context, Andre has provided great leadership as we continued our journey to becoming a full-fledged academic health sciences center. She has guided us through the development of two strategic plans, has seen our current plan virtually 100% implemented or in progress, has worked effectively with our regional health partners and with government to manage the pressures put on the health system in the Northwest and on our hospital. We have the busiest emergency department in Ontario, yet we are consistently at or near the top of all efficiency markers of hospitals for our province. Andre has been an integral part of that performance. So we are losing a great leader, and we will have big shoes to fill. On a personal note, I met Andre when she was the um, running to fill the CEO's job here back in 2010. And what started as a relationship between colleagues has evolved into a friendship that I know will last long after Andre leaves Thunder Bay. You've been a great friend, and lots of fun, and a great contributor to the hospital and the community. So I'll miss you as a healthcare leader, but I'll especially miss you as a friend. On behalf of TBRHSC and TBRRI, thank you, Andre, for your contribution to our hospital and community. We wish you well. Thank you, Susan. So I'm going to read this text because my boy said, Mom, if you do this, don't cry. So I think if I read my text, I'll be better doing this. So thank you, Susan. I appreciate those kind words. It truly is with mixed emotions that I'm here today. I'm excited about the prospect of moving to a new challenge, but I'm saddened that I will be leaving this community, the friends I've made here, and this hospital. Nearly five years ago, Thunder Bay embraced myself and my family with a warmth that I will never forget. We were welcomed and made to feel part of the community. I then soon discovered the quality of the people at our hospital and the excellence of service we provide here. I'm proud of what we've accomplished in the last five years we implemented our 2015 strategic plan and are well on the path of developing our 2020 strategic plan. We continue to embed patient-family-centered care as our core <laughs> philosophy and have become the leading practitioners of this in Canada. We have seen patient satisfaction level rise even as we run the busiest ER department in the province and deal with the constant new normal of overcapacity. Much of the credit for this goes to you, my staff, physicians, and volunteers. Our staff deliver excellent care under very challenging conditions. I have been heartened and inspired by the work and dedication I see here. From all aspects of our organization, from housekeeping to management, I am also very thankful for the support I have received from my hospital board in the past five years. We could not have accomplished what we have accomplished without your support and guidance, and I'm so grateful for that. I also want to thank the boards of Thunder Bay Regional Hospital Foundation and my friend Glenn. It's been wonderful working with you and Thunder Bay Regional Research Institute for the support over the years. I've been an acting CEO there for a short period of time, but it's been a wonderful time. 
But none of this could have happened without the community. Just as the community embraced myself and my family, so it has embraced ownership and responsibility for the hospital. Our strategic plans, and thus our daily operations, is driven by engagement with the community. By embracing and driving our engagement process, the community is embedded itself in the future of this hospital and has ensured that the future will be successful. I cannot state how grateful I am for the community's support in charting our success. Finally, I want to say a special thank you to all the good friends I have made here in Thunder Bay and Northwestern Ontario. As Susan said, many of these relationships began as professional collaborations, but have blossomed into friendships that I will cherish wherever I go. Thank you for everything over the past five years. Thank you very much. All right. Nicely okay. done. Way to keep it together. That was excellent. Um, so we'll take uh, questions here from the, the expensive seats in the front row. Do you just want to talk about uh, looking for a replacement for Andre? Okay, so it's very early days. We've only just received Andre's resignation as of Monday. So we do have a policy in place for, in terms of succession planning. Um, we are meeting this evening, in fact, to start to put the wheels in motion um, to start that search. Uh, there will be a, a committee struck, which will include a, a variety of representatives from the board, physicians, NASA, um, a number of groups. So that's that's where we're starting with tonight, and we'll be moving forward in terms of um, an interim uh, during that time period. Um, also in discussions with some individual, and uh, hopefully we'll be in a position to make an announcement on that too. Andre, what do you feel your biggest accomplishment um, has been in your tenure here at, uh, at the Helm of Fenerbahce Regional? I think um, opening up the doors to the community. I think that if you look at the work that we did in 2015 with the strategic plan, we engaged over 350 people to come in and, and really give their input. And in the plan 2020, our, our target is over 750 people. And it's really, this institution belongs to the community, and I think the community um, feels that now. They, they, they are part of the process, and they have a say in the direction that this community uh, should take. And I think that's probably my biggest accomplishment. Any regrets or anything you would like to have accomplished while you were here that you just couldn't quite get done? Oh, there's, a, well, I'd like to have the cardiovascular program approved, and I have four months left, and I'm going to give it my darndest. Uh, I'd love to have no deficit. So there's a lot of things that, uh, but it's a difficult industry. And I think I gave my 300%. And uh, I think that when you have a 20, the, the strategic plan 2020 will be, the strategic goals will be done by the time I leave. And I think it's going to be a wonderful spot for someone to come in and, and continue the wonderful work that the community has done in this hospital. What made you want to go to the new position you're going to? So I've been around the health industry for a long time. I've worked at the ministry. I've done that piece. I've worked at the RHA level. I've been CEO of an RHA. I've been CEO of an academic. And what Rouge Valley offers to me is, first of all, I've never, I'm from a small town called Camelton, New Brunswick, 10,000 people. I've never worked in the urban sector. Uh, that's number one. Number two is they service a growing population. That's one of the areas that has the, the, the most growth uh, in Canada. That's something that I've never dealt with. And there's also a lot more competition. And someone say, why do you want to do that? Well, you know, I've got, I'm 54 years old. I've got one good contract left in me. And I've never done that. And that kind of excites me to see if I can be successful at that. There's been uh, gridlock at the hospital for a year now. What, how, how do you see that playing into your legacy? Well, gridlock is an international problem. It's a national problem. It's uh, more acute here because of the isolation. That's number one. And I think that um, as a, and it's not a Thunder Bay problem, Thunder Bay regional problem, it's a community problem. 
it's a partnership problem and I think that um, the partners in Northwestern Ontario made a very good uh, pitch to the minister last year when she came and announced uh, the $14 million. They recognized that we were different. Uh, the Lynn has done a wonderful job, St. Joe's CCAC, we work together very well. We need to make sure that that money continues to come and there needs to be community capacity. And I think that uh, the Lynn has put a plan together that addresses that problem. Now if government can approve that plan, um, the overcapacity in the next 12 to 14 months could be a thing of the past for Thunder Bay Regional. There were rumors last year staff dissatisfaction here. Some people are saying that you're leaving under a cloud. What do you say to that? Well, it's a very bright cloud. Um, I've, I've, uh, as a CEO, you have to make very hard decisions. And sometimes people are happy and sometimes people are not happy. But I can tell you that I'm not leaving because I'm not happy. I'm, I'm really leaving because uh, I have a new challenge in front of me. And the timing is good. The timing uh, is good in the sense that we have a new plan. I think the work can continue, but uh, it only has a silver lining. When's your last day? Last day would be mid to June. Okay. Coming from such a unique oh. hub here in Northwestern Ontario, you said now that you grew up in a small town, what do you hope to bring to, to Toronto? Lots. Um, I think that um, when you go from uh, uh, areas to areas, you bring in new ideas. Uh, I've learned a lot here, all right? But I brought a lot of uh, some of the stuff that we did in Brunswick. And I'm hoping this, that the same thing will happen when I go to Rouge Valley. I will learn a lot there, but I can contribute a lot of the strategies. One of the interesting uh, example was when during uh, Christmas time, uh, the GTA um, uh, had an issue with uh, f uh, the flu and they had to go into surge capacity. They were, kind of, they were calling Thunder Bay Regional to talk about surge because that's something that we, we do routinely because of overcapacity. So there's a lot of things I think that I can contribute and that also I will learn when I move there.